Okay, right, so we are going to turn this piece of Purple Heart. Uh, purple Heart with uh, regular bowl gouges. And to start with, we're going to turn the outside edge. So the outside edge for this sort of piece, uh, we're turning it around about 1200 RPM. Um, and I'm going to start by just tidying up the outside edge first with a regular bowl gouge. So this is a 10 millimeter bowl gouge and we're going to drop the handle right down low just to clean up the uneven surface. So here we have a handle really, really low. We want to slice the outside edge and we have end grain here and here. So what we're doing by dropping the, the um, chisel down is slicing and making a nice clean finish on the end grain. Now creating a clean finish means we're going to have to sand less, so we're not going to heat the bowl up, so far less cracks. There we are, so just a little bit more to take off. And what you'll notice with Purple Heart, at the moment this surface, very, very uh, purple, colourful, and this is quite grey, but give this about 10 minutes and it will turn purple again. It needs to oxidise, needs to um, come in contact with the air. There we are, so that's enough of the outside edge. Now we can turn the tool rest around, up against the face. We're going to look for our centre point, which you'll only see once you've got the, the bowl blank turning. And then again, we're going to drag this way, so clean that surface up. So now we have a clean paste, we have a clean edge. Next thing to do is we're going to, we're going to hold a foot here in the inside of our jaws. So I've already measured the jaws. We can now take that measurement to the bowl. And that's going to create our foot at this point. So parting tool next. It's a regular parting tool and that's three millimetres wide. And we're cutting to the outside line. About four millimetres deep. And then carry on, drag away the waste. Slowly move the tool rest around as you're taking away more body. So there, if we stop the lathe now, that's the rough shape, but that's what we call a pull cut. And a pull cut doesn't have a bevel rubbing. The problem with a pull cut is that we leave a lot of tearing here. So we have to um, give this bowl gouge a cut. It's going to stop that from happening. So we're going to push with the chisel now. 
So where I was pulling this way, now we can move the tool handle over this way and push the chisel across the surface. So back of the tool rubbing, back of the bevel rubbing, handle comes around to me until I see dust on the chisel tip, then we push forward. So we're pushing the bevel through the timber, that's going to give us a really, really clean finish. Stop and have a look at the lathe now. So we've not we've gone from a, a dull finish, very torn, to a really really nice crisp clean finish. Next thing to do is tidy up this area, the area that we couldn't quite get to with the bevel of the gouge. And to do that, we can use skew chisel on its side, so a regular skew chisel, and we're going to scrape now, very very gentle scrape. Clean the outside of the that foot up. So again, the same thing, just a gentle scrape. And then the bottom of the foot, we can do that with the bowl gouge. Again, bevel rubbing using the push cut method. So a nice clean surface and all ready, all ready to sand up. So we're going to start sanding in a moment. Now we need to put the dust extraction on for this, but before we do, we'll just explain a little bit more about the, about the abrasive. So we're going to start by coarse, and we're going to start with a 120 grit abrasive. Then we're going to travel through to a 150, a 180, and then a 240, and a 320. But as well as that, we're going to use a rotary sander. Okay, and the rotary sander is going to turn as we make contact with the timber. Um, and again, we're going to go through grades with that. We're going to let the bowl tell us what grades it needs to go to. So if we could have the dust extraction on.
prices have gone or any tears have disappeared as well. And your key areas are going to be here, they're going to be here. It's going to be where the grain is running against you. So we've gone down to a 320 grit abrasive there. So now we can look to our sanding sealer firstly. And the sanding sealer is going to lock the grain in. To start with it, it's going to make the grain stand up, at which point you're going to then sand it back off. Um, and then we can think about putting a wax on. So this is um, uh, the shellac based sanding sealer. So this is, uh, it needs to be applied all over, completely covering. It'll dry very, very quickly, so you can, you can sand it off almost immediately. And always have the lathe off while you're doing this, otherwise you'll find your tissue will stick to the bowl and the sealer will cover your glasses. So there we are, all over. We'll give that a few seconds just to harden a little bit. And then we need to sand it back with a very fine abrasive, around about 320 or 400. And at a very, very slow speed. Thing is, if we try and sand um, a wet solution off with a, um, a fine abrasive at high speed, we end up clogging. So just very gentle, all over. And all we're doing here, denibbing, we're taking away the, the grain that stood up from the sanding sealer. Then the sanding sealer dries and locks in position. So then that, that grain will never come back up again. So now, a little bit of the microcrystalline wax, and the good thing with microcrystalline wax is that it's got a water inhibitor in it. So what will happen is any moisture in the air, so the humidity in the air, um, it won't affect the wax, which means it won't dull the wax over time, so it stays nice and shiny for longer. So again, do this without the lathe running. You want to make sure that you're actually covering the whole of the, the grain and, and Purple Heart is quite a porous timber and so it's good to see that uh, the wax is filling the pores. There we are. So with wax, what, before you use tissue to, um, to buff, it's always wise just to use a little bit of the shavings that you've taken off to take off all the excess wax. Again now at a higher speed, so back up to about 1000 to 1200 revs on this size of bowl blank. Some of the shavings just to take off all that excess wax and then a clean piece of tissue or rag. And if you're going to use rag, make sure it's a small piece so you don't catch your fingers. I tend to prefer tissue like this, nice firm tissue and just to buff up to a nice shine. And you can put another layer of wax on if you want to, just to build up the finish. Put this on this piece is nice. There we are. So that's all finished and nice and smooth. So now we can come off the lathe. So all I'll need, get my screwdriver in a moment, we'll just unscrew those screws. So you can see there we've got a nice clean finish. The deepness of the purple will come through in about 10 or 15 minutes as, as the air gets to it, it'll start getting nice and vividly purple again. Okay, so a little bit of tissue down with a little bit of rag even down on the bed of the lathe just to stop scratching. And then carefully out with the screws. Okay, 
Okay, so now we can put the chuck on. Now, the, the jaws I'm using have a nice fine grip section on the inside, so they're nice and clean. We can grip that very small base that we've got there. You want to put a little bit of tissue in between the jaws and the timber just to protect them a bit more than that's probably wise. And a nice pinch. Not too tight, but again, not too soft. Just enough to capture that bowl. So now across the face. Now, we're not going to be able to drag cut. If we drag the surface of that piece of timber away now, so we drag this way, you'll end up burrowing over this corner. We'll end up with a very fibrous, woolly edge. So we're going to push cut straight away. And the first section we'll do is this edge, because when we take the inside out, it'll be too weak. We won't be able to tackle this edge. So that's going to be our first point of contact. So lay your speed down to zero just to start with, and clean that edge up. So same bowl gap, we'll use that 10 mil, and I need to have the tool rest just below center point. So cleaning the outside edge up first, the flute facing away from me, around about the two o'clock position. So that's given us a nice clean finish here. So now we can start thinking about hollowing out. Now, if we hollow out too much, we're going to go through the bottom of the bowl. So we're going to go down to about half the depth of this piece of timber, and then we carry on hollowing to that half depth until we have the first section of bowl thickness. So that's a little bit like this. Handle the right way over the other side of the lathe. Fruit facing two o'clock. We pause, and then bring the handle around. So, pause, then the handle can come down. Pause. same style of cut. Before I get out to here, I'd have gone through the bottom of the bowl. So it's important we stop the depth there. We'll carry on with the same cut now, but we'll stop at that depth. stop, I'm going to pinch to see how thick the bowl is, and we're actually getting a little bit thinner the further down we go, so I need to correct that at this stage. So I can start taking smaller cuts now.
There we are. So that cuts nice and even. So I'm just going to go over now to a sharper gouge. That's just blunted a little bit. Happy with the thickness. So now we can cut straight across the bottom. If we carry on cutting down at that point, again, we're going to go through the bottom of the bowl. So we need to cut across. Stop and check the thickness again. We're nearly there, we've got a little line here to take out. The bevel's rubbing all the way, so you can see where we started, we had the handle over here. By the time we're back and doing the surface, the handle's traveled right the way over. Check the thickness again. We're nearly there, one more cut and that thickness is going to be nice and even. And now lastly, just that little plug from the centre. Before we make our final cut, I'm just going to check that, get the hand in there, make sure the curve is nice. We've still got a little bit to take out, and one thing I want to talk about, as we're going across the bottom, we're actually cutting end grain, so we do need to take a little bit of a smaller cut. careful when you get to the centre, because the timber at the centre of the bowl is moving a lot slower, and just a very slight wiggle up and down just to cover that centre point. Now I think if we have a check there, we should be ready to sand, and that's good, we can carry on and sand now. So, same grades, we're going to go through from 120 right the way up to 320. Now we're stopping at 320 only because this timber doesn't need to go further. If you have a, a slightly different timber and your scratches are still showing, then carry on traveling up through the grade until you, you've got rid of your scratches. But there we go, so dust mask back on again and we can start sanding.
great. And because we're using two methods of sanding, we're using the normal hand sanding and then a little hand rotary sander, you're crossing out the grades. That means you can travel through your abrasives much quicker. So less heat to the bowl, less cracking, less, tr less trouble. And your final sanding will improve for it. So um, back to the sealer. So sanding sealer, just to lock that grain in. especially will we'll soak that sealer up. Just a little bit of care here. We don't want to get any sealer down the back of the bowl now. We've got wax on it, so a little bit careful. Wipe off any excess wax that you've got, uh, any excess um, sealer. And just to give it a couple of seconds, let it dry properly. Turn the lathe speed down low again. And very fine um, sand, so 320 or 400 or 600 even. And just take away those fibers that have stood up. Just a very, very light sanding. Okay, so now back to our wax. So we can apply the wax. start to buff it up with more tissue, we're going to just take off all the excess wax at a higher speed again with a handful of shavings. Just to take away the excess, that's all we need to do. And then back, clean bit of tissue now. using the 10mm um, bowl gouge, microcrystalline wax and shellac sanding sealer. <laughs> 